welcome everybody. Um, it's a real privilege to be able to stand here in front of you and um, share the information with you to enable you to um, have enough knowledge to choose the right uh, breastfeeding solution uh, for your needs. So um, uh, you've already had a little bit of an intro um, as to you know what I do, um, but I am also a midwife and. Um, have uh, quite a close uh, connection with breastfeeding, both personally but also as as a midwife. And I've assisted many women uh, to breastfeed over my uh, longish uh, career. So um, uh, I also visit hospitals. Um, that is part of my role to visit hospitals and health professionals. So I'm always keeping health professionals up to date with uh, you know new products and um, and just ensuring that they're uh, you know their knowledge is up to date, that they can then uh, impart that knowledge to their mothers in their care as well. Minor adjustment. Um, so as it was introduced here, yeah, today I'll be uh, talking about the breastfeeding solutions and what Medela can offer breastfeeding mothers. So our group actually exists to enhance uh, mother and baby health through the life-giving benefits of breast milk. So we cannot underestimate the value of breast milk and therefore our core passion is to support mothers on their breastfeeding journey, to enable them to breastfeed successfully and provide breast milk to the babies when they are not able to feed. But I would like to highlight that here at Medela, we do support uh, mothers to breastfeed their babies directly, and that is, in fact, the ideal scenario. But sometimes, you know, issues arise when that um, is, not, uh, is not possible. It is an amazingly rewarding experience uh, for those of you who um, have already, uh, might be sitting in the audience, have already breastfed, as you know. And it um, certainly, apart from uh, providing, you know, all the uh, nutritional um, value to your baby, um, there's also, you know, a lot, uh, you know, far greater benefits um, as well that, uh, you know, um, you know, involve emotional and, um, and psychological factors as well. So the bonding is really, really important. So as I mentioned, uh, there may be situations or uh, some little challenges um, that may not allow a mum to feed and uh, we have those um, products to, uh, um, for mothers to use when um, they are not able to uh, breastfeed. So one of the uh, products that I'll be talking to you about um, in particular is the, the Calma, which is a, a very new feeding device, very unique um, feeding device, as um, you heard in the introduction. And if you have a look at the slide here, you'll see we've got a little diagram of uh, the breast pump. That's certainly one of the solutions that we provide mums um, and uh, a picture of the Calma. So mums express, expresses the milk and she feeds the milk back to a baby using the Calma device. So just a little bit about uh, Medela, um, just so you have a little bit of an understanding of uh, where, where we come from and, and who we are. Um, we, go, we date back to 1961 and we're a Swiss, uh, Swiss based company, sorry, uh, now growing uh, you know, over the 50 years. So we've got a very, very proud and rich history. And we've certainly become a well recognised and respected brand as well um, amongst health professionals and also the hospitals. And one thing that differentiates us from any other company that uh, manufacture lactation uh, aids and accessories is that uh, our company supports uh, research in lactation. Um, and that is um, extre extremely important. We have a, a human lactation research team based here at the University of Western Australia. And Peter Hartman is a, a well-recognised uh, researcher and um, health professional. Um, that has made some uh, groundbreaking discoveries over the recent years, particularly um, when we're looking at the breast anatomy, for instance. Um, you know, not, not so long ago, you know, these discoveries were made. Um, and also, um, your know, research into the way babies suck on the breast and so forth. And there's, there's you know, a multitude of um, research uh, papers that have been published. Um, that have come out of the University of WA. Um, and certainly, you know, this research also um, you know, changes our practice as well and how we educate our mums. So if we have a look at um, the science of infant sucking, for example, that's led to the development of the Calma. So that's where that uh, stems from. And, um, and there's other research that has taken place um, as well 
over the years that has resulted in um, products such as the, uh, the Symphony Breast Pump. I'll mention that a little bit later on. Um, yeah, and also for you know further uh, product development as well. So on this slide here, I've just got a um, picture of the breast anatomy and also the two-phase sucking. So that was just some of that research that I've um, just mentioned to you. Um, certainly, a lot of research had been undertaken in uh, the composition of breast milk as well. And we all know that breast milk uh, is best for all babies. Uh, it contains all the ingredients for a healthy new life. It not only provides the nourishment, but also has all these other immunological and developmental factors um, and, and benefits that are unique for each mother and baby, in fact. And, um, you know, it contains living cells, again, you know, providing those, um, those immunological benefits as well. Um, it also has the ability to adapt as well to the needs of the growing baby. So it's always changing throughout lactation and it will consist of exactly the right amount of uh, proteins and carbohydrates and fats for each indiv individual baby at the right time as well. So if we just have a look at the chart on the right hand side, just so you can visualise the difference between you know, formula um, milk and breast milk. And um, breast milk is indeed the, the most superior form of milk for baby um, and you can see that there are you know antibodies hormones antivirals anti-allergens and growth factors that um, formula cannot provide your baby so this is why it's really important um, you know to breastfeed and, and when a mum can't breastfeed to continue providing that milk to a baby uh, through other means Okay, so we've got, um, babies are very, very um, obviously efficient. Nature has designed them that way. Uh, and they instinctively know how to uh, best get the milk from the breast by changing the way they suckle during a breastfeed. So over a period of a couple of years, there was um, quite a number of studies that took place um, to study the natural sucking pattern um, of babies on the breast. And this led to the development of two-phase expression. Initially, the baby, um, when he starts feeding, will start with a uh, very shallow, um, short uh, sucking motion to stimulate a letdown reflex. And then what happens, one, once that milk has let down, then the baby will go into a slower, deeper sucking motion. Um, and when we um, apply that to the, the pump, for instance, which you can see up there, the yellow pump in the right-hand corner, that mimics what a baby does at the breast. So when a mum is expressing, um, she would be using that, you know, that technology to enable her to efficiently empty out her breast in as, lit, as little time as possible. So just um, if we have a look at some of the other pumps on the screen as well, the, um, the ones down the bottom there are what we call personal use pumps, which are available for mums to buy out um, in the pharmacy and the retail outlets. Those pumps there actually have the same technology as the Symphony breast pump. So again, the two-phase technology. So if you're looking at um, you know, purchasing a pump for yourself, maybe that's um, a pump that you know uh, would be worth uh, while considering because of the whole um, two-phase technology. And it'll obviously uh, deliver um, great uh, results for you as well. Okay, so this brings me into what I'd uh, probably uh, want to spend a little bit more time on discussing with you today, and that's the science of infant sucking. So one particular research um, uh, was that of the, uh, the baby sucking on the breast. And um, I'll just uh, take you through some of the key points and research findings of, the, um, of, of what happens inside the baby's mouth when he's actually sucking on the breast. So this will give you an understanding um, and how this knowledge um, can be applied to that very special feeding device called the Calma. So contrary to what we used to believe, we now know that baby actually needs to create a vacuum uh, in order f uh, for him to drain the milk out of the breast. And the baby's tongue no longer goes back far into the, into the mouth as we once believed. We used to believe that the nipple would um, be drawn back into the baby's mouth as far back um, to the point where the, um, the junction of the hard and soft palate. So it actually um, stops short from there. So I'll take you through this diagram in a moment. 
And also there is no indentation of the nipple as well. So Attention there's... please, would Catherine Kelly please come to the entrance of the expo at door four immediately? Catherine Kelly, could you please come to the entrance of the expo at door four immediately? Thank you. Oh, apologise for that. Um, and no marked indentation of the nipple as well. So when a baby comes off the breast, the nipple should look nice and healthy and round, exactly the same way before mum started to breastfeed. The other uh, finding also... Um, oh, no, sorry, I do apologise. I'm backtracking. Um, yeah, I think I've covered all those key points. So I'll just take you through the slide um, here and the uh, diagram and point out some of the, um, the features there because I'll we'll also show you another slide of how the baby actually sucks on the breast. It would be quite interesting to view. So my pointer. So that's the mum's nipple there. As you can see, these white lines are the actual ducts inside her nipple. That is the hard palate there. That bit there is a soft palate. This is the baby's tongue. So many years ago, we believe that the nipple would go back to about this point. As you can see, it actually, according to the research, stops about here. So that's really important to note. Okay. All right, so this is um, uh, the slide that, uh, that I'll go through in the little video. Um, it's exactly the same diagram as the previous uh, picture there, but again, just if you can't visualise it, the mum's nipple is here. Again, the hard palate, the soft palate there, and the baby's tongue. It'll go through a loop, so I'll just um, talk you through that. Okay, so here is the baby's tongue. It's up in the roof of the mouth. It comes down. It creates a nice big vacuum. And we'll do it again comes down, creates a vacuum, milk is drawn out of the breast. I'll show it to you again, there it is there. And comes down, it opens and baby's able to swallow. So that's basically what happens um, when your baby's sucking on the breast. Very interesting bit of research. Might, um, just as a little exercise for you, for take your tongue inside your mouth and, um, and have a feel exactly of where um, that uh, junction of the hard and soft palate is. Of course, babies' mouths aren't as big as ours, but that'll just give you some idea. So. Okay, so now, with all these discoveries, so we've led to a development of a uh, very uh, unique feeding system called the Kalma. So we've already uh, mentioned that. And uh, the research was in fact based um, over seven years, both at the Shao University in Japan and also here at the University of Western Australia, and was designed for uh, mothers who were expressing milk and needing to, needed to give it back to their babies as well. They found that uh, babies feeding on the Kalma are able to maintain their natural feeding behaviour learned at the breast. So that is um, quite unique. And there really is nothing else on the market that compares. So therefore, babies are then able to drink, pause and breathe regularly. And only when a vacuum is created with this device will the milk actually flow out of the bottle. So a mum who needs to express her milk, let's say she returns back to work, and most mums do return back to work sort of fairly early these days, um, you know, would need to, doesn't really need to give up uh, breastfeeding altogether. Um, she can continue to express, and in her absence, her baby can be given the breast milk using the Kalma, okay, so that when she then returns home, she can put the baby back on the breast, um, and it's a very smooth transition. So a baby who is actually given breast milk using a conventional teat, this one here, uh, also referred to as cherry teats, um, these babies can't actually regulate the flow um, of milk and they're forced to drink the milk very quickly. So the baby really doesn't need to create any vacuum at all. Um, the vacuum, the, sorry, there's a positive pressure that um, is delivered from the bottle itself. So not very difficult for a baby to, to drink from that. But in fact, the baby um, then starts to learn a very different feeding behaviour. So when a mum does 
let's say, return home, and let's say she has been using this teat, um, you know, and it might only be after one feed, it might be after a couple, the baby will start fussing at the breast because the baby needs to work a little bit harder on the breast. Um, so all of a sudden, you know, baby starts fussing, mum starts questioning as to what's going on, and, uh, and then she starts to think about, you know, where she's going to go with her feeding, and, uh, you know, she starts to think about weaning, and that's really not what we want to do. We really need to support her along her journey and ensure that she continues to breastfeed, um, as we said, for all those uh, reasons um, that I mentioned earlier. So babies um, who also feed on the calm are able to maintain a very uh, steady heart rate and breathing rate and, then, and, and nice and calm. So they don't really fuss at all um, and, put, and are not placed um, under any undue sort of stress really when they're feeding on the calmer. So also the, uh, the facial muscles that are used um, for feeding with a, one of these bottles is very different to um, the muscles that are used uh, with the calma, um, as are the, you know, the muscles that are used for breastfeeding as well. So babies tend to have a habit of tongue thrusting as well. Um, so that, um, that, that motion can also lead to um, middle ear infections in babies when they're using these te this teat in particular. Um, and also malocclusions, which are basically sort of deformities of the oral cavity. Um, so really not the ideal. Um, for feeding milk back to the baby. So what I might do, um, I'll take you through um, the components that make up the actual teat itself. But before I go on, just to uh, mention that the calma is introduced to a baby once breastfeeding has actually established um, and not earlier, because we really want to make sure that the baby knows exactly what they're doing on the breast first. It's very important. So, um, you know, if you need to give breast milk to your baby, then please consider the Calmatite as opposed to any other bottle. Okay, so I'll quickly take you through our components. Now we've got uh, breast milk. <laughs> All right, so the main features of the device are the three components here. Okay, we've got the base, uh, very large hole in the centre, as you can see. There's a little rubbery valve here, and that allows for air to circulate through the, the feeding bottle, so the baby's not actually swallowing um, in air. It can reduce, you know, gassiness, as we say. It's not an anti-colic teat as such, but it can um, help uh, with that. The middle, the, sorry, the middle layer, um, has got a very, very tiny hole, which you probably won't be able to see uh, from where you're sitting, um, in the centre here. So that's where the milk will actually flow out of. The teat itself um, is designed to, to be at a length to go back into the baby's mouth where it needs to be. It, also, it is also open at the very end, um, but that does not mean that the milk will pour out naturally um, at that rate. Um, because as, we, um, as I mentioned earlier, the baby creates the vacuum and then determines the flow of the milk. Now, when we're applying the um, teat onto the parts, you grab this middle part here. And by the way, these little um, pods here just stabilise this part of the, the device. So you flip out your um, teat that way, onto there, and flip down and need to ensure that it goes around properly and then that's placed in there and it doesn't matter which way it goes, it's all the same. Onto your, onto your bottle of breast milk and it doesn't matter how tightly or how loosely you put on, it's not going to determine how quickly the milk will flow. And if I tip that upside down, you'll see that there is absolutely no milk coming out of it whatsoever. Yeah, have a look at that for instance. You can see how quickly that drips. So just to recap, the baby needs to attach to this feeding device nice and deeply as he would on the breast. If he just nibbles away on the end, there'll be no milk draining out at all. So nice big deep attachment. The baby will then create a vacuum, again similar to the breast as I showed you earlier. Um, and only when that vacuum is applied will the milk flow. 
that's when the baby's tongue is down, of course, in the mouth. When the tongue goes back up in the mouth, the vacuum is lessened and, or it, um, and, and it ceases, then there's no flow at all. So the baby, like I said earlier, is in complete control um, of his feed. Um, and they don't tend to drink the milk as quickly from here as they would out of a normal um, bottle, naturally. So... And in fact, um, the, uh, the Calma um, device actually won uh, an award for innovation as well at uh, a very prestigious fair in Germany as well. All right, so just um, to take you through the final slide. Now, um, I've already discussed a couple of the solutions that we uh, provide um, with our products to you. But if you have a look at um, this solution circle, um, it is in our, uh, in our brochures and in some, some of our literature, and you may have already seen it. So basically, it just um, shows that we do have products to cater for every part of a mum's breastfeeding experience. Um, and we step in with those um, products when, you know, she's not able to breastfeed. Sorry. Okay. Um, now, I'm just about to finish up, so um, I'm happy to answer any questions here, but I think we're probably a little bit pushed for time. But we do have our stand down at K15. Um, if you would like to come along and see how um, the Calma, you know, works in a little bit more detail, please come down and, and join us. We've got a couple of um, our staff there, and I'll be there as well to take you through. But we can also discuss any other um, sort of breastfeeding questions um, as well and uh, attend to your needs there. So thank you once again for joining um, me here today and, and having a listen to what I've uh, <laughs> had to share with you. So um, I uh, wish you all the very best and uh, thank you again. And uh, just on the final note, I'd failed to mention that uh, we do have a Facebook page. So please uh, join our community. There's interesting information posted on there as well. We welcome your feedback. Um, and our website too has got uh, an amazing amount of information for you. So thank you.